All right, this is grade three, module three, lesson 10. And in this lesson, uh, we're gonna be using the distributive property as a way to multiply and divide. In particular, we're gonna be doing it so that if we get a problem that we don't quite remember, for example, um, eight times nine, and that's what this array is. We've got eight going uh, up and down, we've got nine going across. Now the idea would be, well, maybe the student doesn't quite remember 8 times 9. But the student could take that 9 and break it up into 5 plus 4. So the student would change that 9 to 5 plus 4. And so we would have 8 times and then 5 plus 4. But really, that means it's going to be 8 times 5, and that will give us this array right here. And then plus, we're going to do 8 times 4, and that gives us this array over here. So if the student can't quite remember the multiplication fact for 8 times 9 and do the problem in one step, they can, as an adaptive tool, um, multiply 8 times 5 and 8 times 4 and then add those two answers together. In this case it would be 40 plus 32 which gives us the answer of 72. So of course 8 times 9 equals 72. Um, and of course ultimately we want students to memorize their fact. We want them to know that 8 times 9 is 72. But in the meantime, as we're building understanding, uh, we don't have to wait for the student to understand. that we They could get, or memorize the answer. They can get the answer through developing number sense and understanding that 9 can be broken up into 5 and 4, and you can solve the problem in two steps instead of one. So let's put that into practice. And uh, we've got this array, and we can see that the array, uh, let's see, has 1, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's seven rows. It's, it's seven going up and down. So I'm gonna label that seven. And then going across, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's seven by eight, in which case we're, we're multiplying eight times seven, or we can think of it as seven times eight. In this case, we're gonna kind of focus on seven times eight. And so we have this 8. Whoa, that's a funny looking 8. So we have this 8. But let's say the student doesn't quite remember 7 times 8 off the top of his head. So we can use the distributive property and break this up into two smaller arrays. So this array on the left is going to be 7 times 5. And the array on the right is going to be 7 times 3. And that's because 5 plus 3 is 8. And then we're going to use our multiplication that we do remember. 7 times 5 is 35. 7 times 3 is 21. And now we're going to add 35 plus 21, and that gives us 56. So let's fill in down here. So you've got 8 times 7, and that's the same thing as 7 times... Well, it's supposed to be 7 times 8, which means we're missing a 3 right here. And then we can see that this array right here is 7 times 5. So this array right here is going to be 7 times 3. You add those together, so you get 35 plus 21. So we're going to multiply, and we get the products, the number of tiles in each array. And then adding 35 plus 21 gives us 56. Now, if you can use the distributive property in multiplication, you can use the distributive property in division as well. And so in this case, they have already done the breaking for us. They took 72, in this case, I'm going to put it like this, and they broke up 72 into 40 plus 32. using. So they broke it up using addition or subtraction, whatever you want to call it. And then, instead of dividing 72 by 8, we're going to do 40 divided by 8, and then 32 divided by 8. So over here in the right, 72 
divided by 8 equals 40 divided by 8 and 32 divided by 8. That's this part right here and right here. Now we can see that 40 divided by 8 is 5, so 32 divided by 8 is 4, and 5 plus 4 is 9. And we can see that over in this area right here. So if we don't remember that 72 divided by 8 is 9, we can break it up. Oh, well, 40 divided by 8 is 5. 32 divided by 8 is 4. Ah, so that means the answer is 9. And then here we're going to attack the problem in a different way. We're going to do it through skip counting. Uh, count by eights. So we're going to skip count. So we've got 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, uh, 54, 60. No, that isn't right. Let's see. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, plus 8 is 56. <laughs> Whoa, 56. 64, 72, and 80. Woohoo! Okay, and now we automatically know that 8 times 1 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, 8 times 3 is 24, 8 times 4 is 32, etc., etc., etc. So we can see that 8 times 9 is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Ah, this one, 72. So we can see that this is 8 times 9. 8 times 5 is going to 8 times 5 is going to be 1 2 3 4 5. Ah, it's going to be 40. So 40 is 8 times 5 and we you can we can uh, figure that out and keep going. You don't need my help anymore. But the idea would be um, this is yet another way in order to help students memorize and access their number facts, right? We don't want them to just memorize. We want them to know a variety of ways to help them understand why it is so that it makes memorizing much more meaningful. In fact, if you really understand something, there is no need to memorize it because you understand it, you get it, it just is inside of you. Memorizing is only important when it's not really meaningful. Uh, for example, let's take a quick look at 8 times 6. I'm going to just kind of beat a dead horse a little bit here. I'm going to say, okay, let's say we've got 8 times 6. Um, and you don't quite remember what 8 times 6 is, a uh, couple of ways to do it. You could take that 6 and change it to 5 and 1. And instead, you could do 8 times 5 and 8 times 1, and then add them together. So in this case, this is 40. In this case is 8. So the answer is 48. All right, so 8 times 6 equals 48. So don't forget, we got a variety of ways for students to um, memorize their multiplication facts. And that is Grade 3, Module 3, Lesson 10.